You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode 108, How to Survive Group Work. We're going to talk about the reasons why group work can sometimes feel like a nightmare and how to try to help your teen with their mindset and with the practicalities throughout group work so they don't end up either doing all of the work for everyone or getting left out and they go on to get the grade that they personally deserve no matter the contribution or the work of others. I'm Katie Jones and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence and this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart and successful in their study and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hey VIPs, I hope you and your teens are doing great. I have mixed feelings about this episode. I'm feeling particularly good about this episode because I finally decided to tackle this little beast of a topic. Honestly, I had a request for this from a parent quite a while ago, a long while ago, (laughs) to do an episode about group work. And as you can tell... I have put it off for a long time, (laughs) not because it isn't relevant or important, but because this one does honestly stump me a little bit. Group work can be hard, and that's where the other side of those feelings comes in, especially in school. I think we could all agree that sometimes it can still be tough at any stage or as an adult, but at school where there are so many factors at play and your teen often has little control over those factors... And there are often a lot of uneven variables, let's say, between the students. It might be in terms of the levels of confidence. It might be whether they're a leader or a follower. It might be their ability in that subject. These can all lead to things becoming sometimes annoying, frustrating, maybe a total nightmare. (laughs) And I think it's especially the case for those students who are hardworking and do want to do well. If ever they are in a group with those that are less so inclined to work hard or aren't so bothered about doing well, or the students don't really gel together, they haven't got that perfect mix of, you know, one person who's a leader, then other people with lots of different skill sets that all can take over different elements of the project, or they are in a group where others just want to sort of take over and maybe your team ends up getting a little bit relegated. I would imagine we've all seen or experienced these sorts of things happening either for ourselves or for me as a teacher, students that I've witnessed or for you as a parent to your teen perhaps. Because if your teen is put into a group or they get to choose a group with their friends, so they're on the same social standing and they are all at the same or similar academic level, they all want to put in the same amount of high effort and they all have slightly different strengths so that they can all take different parts of that project, then of course the group work would be a lot more enjoyable, probably a lot more successful and I wouldn't have had this request and I wouldn't be trying my best to give any shreds of help or evidence, which is what I'm going to attempt to do on this podcast, because I can tell you, I have never mastered this myself. I am not someone who trains, you know, groups to work well together. I'm not an expert in social or emotional dynamics between teenagers. So this really will be a little bit of a different episode because I'm not going to necessarily be able to give you specific great advice or tips that I really feel like I'm super confident in or are proven to succeed or that I've had a ton of experience in. Those are the descriptions that I really aim to be the case on anything I tend to share anywhere. But I have thought about this a lot. And if there are maybe just one or two suggestions, (laughs) let's call them, that might just make your team's group work a little bit less painful for them and a little bit more enjoyable or successful, then I think it's worthwhile sharing these. So here's how I'll go about this. (laughs) I'll say, hey, if you were my nephew in 12 years time, he's currently three, (laughs) and you had a group work project coming, here's how I would try to help. The first thing I'd say to him is expect the worst. 
it probably will be annoying. It probably won't be fun. And if that's not the case for your teen and they get a great experience, then bonus, yay, that's wonderful. But as much as I'm usually the optimist or certainly try to be, in this case, I actually wonder whether we try to look at this a little bit differently. I shared a similar concept to this in episode 78, where I talked about an alternative strategy when your teen hates or struggles with a subject, where instead of trying to convince them that they should like it or that they definitely need Shakespeare or Pythagoras in future or that the topic really is fun, we just accept that it isn't. And we use the experience to build other personal and mindset skills instead. So in this case, it would mean that we basically use the whole group work experience as an opportunity, not only to build some team working skills, or at least maybe see what works and what doesn't, which is obviously what is supposed to happen, but perhaps you could also use it as a life experience. Because honestly, I don't see much team building or leadership guidance or training provided before the group work begins in schools. Now, again, I think this is because teachers aren't trained in how to deliver that, just like they're not trained in how to deliver exam technique. The only reason I have that is from my years of working with exam boards in an assessment. But the students are just supposed to somehow figure it out. It's almost like throw them to the lions and see what happens. I will say maybe it does happen a little bit in some of the pastoral aspects or some of those off timetable activity days, but rarely do I see it happen. I don't think I've ever seen it happen, to be honest, in relation to an actual academic project or in a subject assignment to have any advice or guidance on team building or leadership. So maybe treating group work as a way to develop the mental and emotional resilience or simply just have the life experience of working through a situation that you haven't chosen or isn't working that well is just a different way to look at it. It may not be the ideal way, but it is a different way to look at it. And in that way, maybe your team could consider some questions along the way like, what sort of person do I want to be in this situation? Or how would a person I respect and admire react to a particular situation? What opportunity to build what kind of skill is actually being presented to me here, even though it might not be a skill or an experience that was intended? Because If we can learn to deal with situations that we haven't chosen or aren't going how we'd like, then that in itself is, I believe, a useful skill to build for life. So for example, I might say to my nephew, okay, if we plan on the fact that you are going to at some point feel, let's say frustrated because it's not fair how the work or the tasks or the roles have been allocated, or you don't like the task or the job that you've been given, or someone else isn't doing their job in the way that you think they should be, Could we also plan for or consider how we want to behave or respond? What kind of person do we want to be in that situation? Do we want to step in and try to change something in a calm and positive way? Maybe. Do we want to practice the art of acceptance and not necessarily try to change anything and stay in our own lane? Maybe. Or maybe there's something else that just feels like it's a good way to respond. In other words, could this be an opportunity to practice some people skills? Could this be an opportunity to practice being polite and calm, even when we aren't feeling polite or calm? Or to just try and see things from another person's perspective? Is it an opportunity to practice empathy or just seeing how there are issues in communication and how that can lead to misunderstandings or resentment. Now, I'm not saying that we should just roll over and let things happen or let people walk all over us. Although that was probably how I dealt with group work, to be honest, as a student back in the day. But is there sometimes some value in keeping the peace or trying to see the best in someone or something? Perhaps. Could this be an opportunity to try working on that? It's likely, (laughs) but also there might be some opportunities to get a little bit strategic, maybe work with the situation. And I will get into that in just a while. Right now, we're just basically preparing for the worst. Like I said, if that doesn't happen, bonus. It's a great day or a week or term, but we are expecting this to be a little bit unfair or a lot unfair in terms of how the tasks are allocated. We expect that there will be disagreements or clashes in personality or miscommunications and 
generally a lack of enjoyment. And if we've therefore accepted that there may be things like this happening, there are also going to be a lot of opportunities to develop some life experiences and practice perhaps some social, emotional, mental skills, both inwardly and outwardly. And I know this is sounding a little bit negative right now. I don't mean it to, but sometimes just accepting that something isn't going to be great or perfect is not always a bad thing, in my opinion. It's life and we need to be able to work with that. So let's get to the more tangible stuff and something that leans a little bit more to the positive side. How can we make sure that the group produces something that means your teen gets the mark that they want, that reflects their effort and ability and that they are capable of without either them doing everything or at least partly their own work and partly the work of others in order to get there. So here's the second thing that I would tell my nephew. I say, how can we tackle this task or project strategically? Can we make some quick judgments about what needs to be done and how those things will come across and how they're going to be marked at the end? Now, clearly, this is where some useful skills related to study, assessment, task descriptors, marking criteria all come in. Because if your teen is feeling confident about the topic and the task and how it's going to be marked, they can quickly identify a part of the task that has a heavy weighting of high level commands and high level criteria. So for example, they don't want to put themselves on just making the front cover. There's going to be likely zero marks available for the front cover. They're going to want to put themselves on writing things that demonstrate more cognitive effort, higher cognitive ability. Now they may or may not take up more time or effort. Sometimes they might, sometimes they might not, but there will definitely be more credit available. So if it's a book review, let's say, they don't put themselves on the introduction to the book and the author because they're just basic description level facts. They want to put themselves on the comparison to another text because comparison is analysis. Or they want to write a critique or a judgment about the book, which is evaluation. Or they want to write about how it conveys a certain theme or message, which is analysis level. And yes, some of these strategic decisions might mean that they work a little bit harder than some of the other students or have to do a little bit more, but at least they will be credited for it. And it will hopefully lift the quality of the whole piece, which will flow through to them then as well. And so finally, following on from that, the final little attempt at a sliver of advice that I would give to my nephew is to try to find a way to make it clear to the teacher who has worked on or produced what. And potentially that might be a subtle way so that it isn't obvious to certain other students in the group that this is what you're doing. Or if they're braver than I was as a student, (laughs) they might be totally happy for it to be obvious. So if it's a drama performance, could you maybe have some fun credits at the end? Who wrote the script? Who directed? If it's a PowerPoint presentation... Could each member of the group read out the slides or the information that they contributed or produced or researched or wrote? And if it's a written report, could each person have their name with each section or on the pages that they created or wrote? Or maybe you could dress it up as a way to keep all of the team organized. Like, let's write down who's done or doing what. Or maybe you could pay the person a compliment who did a certain task or a certain part of the project. Like, gosh, that design or whatever is so good. We should definitely put designed by Barry or Mildred or whoever on there so that you get the credit. And we should probably therefore put each of our sections on there named as well. (laughs) Or maybe something a little bit less transparent or obvious. Maybe it's better to just keep it clear and brave and be bold. I mentioned, didn't I, that I was not a very confident (laughs) or outgoing teen. So take those last ones with a pinch of salt and take all of these suggestions however you want. They are not proven by academic research. They aren't groundbreaking. They certainly aren't official. Do not expect a workshop or a webinar from me on this topic at any point. They perhaps aren't even that effective, maybe except for that first one. I do stand by that one. Preparing for it to be a bit of a nightmare or as practice for people skills, conflict resolution, accepting that life isn't fair and other life experiences. Like I said, not to be negative, but because it means that your teen will be ready to 
find and then try to take some alternative positives or alternative action or create some positives for themselves if it does end up being a not so positive experience. And the others, I hope might just help get them the marks that they deserve personally and ultimately get them into a uni course or a job. That means that in future, they get to work with people that they like and on a topic that they like for any future group or team projects that they might end up being involved with. So (laughs) no miracle solutions to make group work amazing, I'm afraid. But please know that If your teen is struggling with it, not enjoying it, they are not alone. This title is surviving, not how to make it amazing. And if they are having a great experience with it, then definitely cherish and maximize that. And genuinely have them look for the reasons why it worked, why it went well, so they can try to use and take those forwards in any future projects. So thank you for listening. I'm genuinely keen to hear what you think of this episode. Please email me with your feedback, support at rocksolidstudy.com and let me know. I will, of course, still be checking emails while we are house moving. Goodness knows how it's going as this episode drops. We should at the very least be in. We'll have the keys. Who knows if we'll actually have the electricity and the internet connected. I have been promised it will be on for moving day. And right now, as I record this, I'm feeling pretty organized and on top of things. So we will see. Anyway, I will see you back here next week. And until then, I hope you have a brilliant week. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye. If you're ready to have your teen achieve their best possible results with less stress, then I want to invite you to enroll them in the 10-week grade transformation program, where they're going to learn the key concepts, skills, and strategies to catapult their performance in assessments and exams. It's risk-free. They either achieve bigger and better results with a whole lot more confidence in 10 weeks, or we refund you in full. Just head over to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash program and I'll see you there.